All right, everybody, welcome to the Hockey Gambling Podcast, all the sports gambling podcast network. My name is Talon Jenkins. Joined with our host, we got Ryan Gilbert and we got Earl. <laughs> Gentlemen, how the hell are we doing tonight? <laughs> Um, you know, I was doing good. It was a beautiful day here in uh, Philadelphia, 75. I got up, got up to 80, I think, I believe, today. So, you know, nice day. Nice day out. And then I, I come home. I, I watch the Flyers. They're uh, down 6 nothing in Montreal currently. And so, yeah, that's how I'm doing right now. Yeah. Well, I'm doing excellent. Excellent. After uh, yesterday, I stayed up all night talking to Talon about, you know, being orcs and uh, starting a new race. Um a good times there. I, was, I know, barely slept on Monday, but I woke up in time to watch the uh, the UConn Purdue game, which worked out fantastically. Uh, not even a sweat. Like UConn played like a bad first half, and it was still they were still up five or six at the half, and just stomped them in the in the second half. So all those bets came in. <laughs> I got UConn probably with like five or six different futures. So uh, hopefully those come in as well. Um, and Stars 70 to one, Panthers 66 to one now. So uh, that's a pretty sick. Um, yeah, UConn, they're the first team ever to um, win back to back champions when they, they win all 12 games by double digits, covered every spread. So yeah, absolute a masterclass, a legendary team, one of the best ever. So glad, glad we were on them. I know Ryan was as well. Mm hmm. Very nice, very nice. Very happy for you guys. Um, I'm doing good. I'm so sleepy. I was telling Joel before, no sleep last night. Going from midnights to days is always kicking the ass. And, you know, work today. We're going to get through this show, baby. We're going to keep the energy nice and high, nice and positive. We're going to have a good time. Leafs, my Leafs are doing well the past couple of days. Very happy to see, you know. So hopefully we can keep that going through their periods on right now against New Jersey. So very happy man. So a very happy orc over here, if I shall. Oh my god. All right, everybody, let's keep this rocking and roll. Ryan, you're stuck with us. Where this is gonna be bad. We're orcs now, bro. Well, I'm I'm just working towards being inducted into the orc society. I I I don't know what I have to do to to earn earn my place. This measly tiny shell of a goblin over here thinks he can join our orcish ranks mr meyer what do you think of this nonsense he's an ant i already assigned him a role he's an ant because you know he's really tall and skinny and uh makes sense right we'll just have to uh hack him down with our axes uh, that's bring, it bring him down a size he's one of those trees you know the walking trees that's, that's an ant that's how it is yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. tree beard that's gilbert you know tree beard I'll take it. I'll take it. I'll roll with it. You got a little hobbit in your hair up there. You don't want to get him off. Uh, the, Smitty, the, uh, the, the near seven footers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Smitty tall too. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Good for him. That's nice. Uh, I guess everything's bigger in Indianapolis or Indiana, wherever the fuck he is. I don't know. Uh, all right, everybody. Go check out the Sports Gambling Podcast on our website. That's the place to be. Tons of stuff in the world of sports, baby. We got a three-game slate in the NHL. Something something nice and measly. Nothing too crazy, but we might have a nice little fun surprise plan for after that. So stick around for that. Uh, what else is going on? You know, we got baseball. Ryan, what's up in the world of baseball? Is stuff happening? Blue Jays have their home opener. There's so many fucking baseball baseball losers walking around my city today it sucked i'm getting off work and there's a raptors game and a blue jay game i'm like jesus christ somebody put a fucking bullet in my head baseball has been kind of crazy actually there was, there was a rookie that had a no hitter and then the next game he took a no hitter into like the sixth inning that was kind of crazy and astros there i think i saw last night the cubs blew like a eight nothing lead or something padres came back for that so that you know, baseball could be could be all right. I saw our, our boy Dilly was down there at the uh, at the Pirates game today. So, he know, was uh, sh shout out shout out Catfish. There's a great picture of him at that game too. I don't know if you guys saw it, but it was right behind home plate. There, it was fantastic. Yeah, hell yeah. Uh, so baseball is doing its thing. Uh, tons of other stuff. Basketball, NASCAR, uh, MMA is doing its thing. We got the football draft. That's in like what two weeks? In the NFL draft towards the end of April, twenty fifth, mm -hmm. I believe. Oh Thursday. shit! So, yeah, are we, are we gearing up for that yet, Julie? Or are we wait till already, after? Already booked the day off, man. So I'll be good able to man. Sit in front good of my man. computer all day long, dude. I'm off that day too, so we'll just be fucking having a blast on that one. That'll be right good. On, right we got on. the we got the we got the Masters teeing off in two days. That's gonna be absolutely electric. Are we recording tomorrow? Are we are we going tomorrow? Yeah, probably we should be right. Oh. It's good yeah. sleep Thursday. Yeah. Okay, for sure. Well, I'll have all my picks ready to go for the show tomorrow. We can do a deep dive into that. Julie, you ready for the Masters or what? Fuck yeah, I haven't bet anything yet, but uh, 
I mean, I had Sam Burns like back in January. And I thought he was going to have a hell of a season. But other than that, I haven't bet anything. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see uh, what to do. I mean, Scheffler's four to one. I mean, it's probably a good bet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have him, you're going to be kicking yourself in the ass come Sunday. But we'll, we'll dive into all of that on tomorrow's show. We'll have a lot of fun running through all that. Um, Tons of stuff in the world of sports, baby. You can find all that information at the SGPN website. Be sure to go check that out. Uh, read all the articles. Listen to all the other shows. Everyone's doing an awesome job. Uh, and we are also uh, we we're giving a nice little shout out to the golf gambling podcast this week. You know they're they're gearing up for the Masters. It's a big week for them, so be sure to go check it out. Those guys are they're very active always, but very active especially this week when it comes to like Twitter and all this good stuff as well. Uh, and their podcasts are absolutely fantastic. So be sure to go give them a listen to before tee off on Thursday and even throughout the weekend. I imagine there's going to be some stuff uh, going down there. So check them out, give them a follow, listen to the show, uh, and of course, and they're, 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 the golf podcast also give them away a tailor made oh. spider x putter apparently oh. that's something pretty cool for for golfers out there can we win that i didn't know that go can ahead sports gambling podcast.com slash masters danner i'm gonna get my girl to enter so it doesn't look as you can both enter. Go, go, go off will you enter for me if you win it can i have it uh, yeah <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll, I'll sell it to you half price I'll, no I, I, I'll, I'll come beat you up half price and take it all right i'll, I'll beat you up with it <laughs> uh, <laughs> with, with my Shout reach plus plus a plus a putter come on you fucking tree you can't swim a putter get out of here <laughs> um all right uh what else going on the discord the discord is a place and if you would like to get into the discord you're more than welcome to do so you can reach out to myself or ryan on twitter we'll be sure to point you in the right direction uh or you can reach out to uh, our social media assistant producer on the hgp twitter account he'll tell you everything you need to know uh a rum one a rum one a rum one a rum one you can reach out to him he'll tell you everything you need to know that's absolutely fantastic as well uh or what you can do is uh go to the axe sharpening stone and when you're in the pits of isengard sharpening your axe preparing for a pillage of men and nords all across the middle earth you will find our very own joel Mar. And when Joel's sitting there just sharpening his axe, you can walk up to them and be like, yeah, how do I how do I get to the Discord? And he'll be sure to tell you and pass it along, baby. Hail the white hand and eat man flesh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so sub subscribe to the podcast as well on uh, Apple and Spotify, as well as on YouTube at uh, How Can You Even Podcast. Just search us up there and leave us some comments, uh, likes, uh, all, all that good stuff. All right, that was a six save by Jake Allen. I need to get a couple more here. Um, all right, we're gonna run through our lock dogs and totals from last time we were all together here. You guys had a banger show. Uh, Julie went three and oh, up uh 4.06 units, absolutely killed it. Ryan went two and one, up 1.13 units. Uh, and myself, I went one and two, down 1.7 units. Uh, Julie, run us through your picks here, buddy. You got a pretty good outing here. <laughs> Lent must be over, eh? <laughs> yeah, for real. I haven't had a, haven't had a three and <laughs> day since before Lent, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> man, I, I didn't, I didn't think about these right away. Uh, Langwood Penguins minus one twelve. Ryan, help me out here. Who are the, who are the Penguins playing? Uh, that was the Capitals. Uh, game. That was one of your biggest bets in a while. That was, that was, oh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was a nice one. Um, yeah, yeah pretty even game. Penguins just were able to uh, make their shots. Capitals couldn't remember that much. Uh, Predators minus one and a half, plus one forty five. Dominated the. Blues, I want to say, like 6 3. Uh, nice bet there. And Avalanche Wild over six. Uh, should have been more, but Eustace and then was, was excellent in this game. Uh, the Wild are probably the better team, even, but the Avalanche won this one five or six to two. So, yeah, another another good bet. I bought three of these. I would make again. I mean, you won them, so I, I hope you would make them. Again. Sometimes, <laughs> I, no, sometimes I, you get lucky, and then you, you're like, okay, I got lucky. I shouldn't have made that bet. But. That's true. Yeah. But yeah, the Avs, they were my lock. Minus 170, a bit juicy. Probably could have taken him, easily could have taken him on the puck line. 5 2 win. Uh, my dog, I switched to the Sharks, plus 275. It's kind of last moment against the Kings. They lost 2 1, so that's fine. My other dog options both lost. So you know, no sweat off my back there. And then my total, uh, Bruins, Canes, under 5.5, minus 105. I think that was a 4 1 final with an empty netter. So uh, yeah, pretty, pretty good under there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for my lock, I had a Carolina money line against Boston at minus 148 here. Uh, Bruins went up early. They were up 3 nothing, 10 minutes into the game here. And, you know, Carolina was chasing after that, and they, they just didn't have a chance. They uh, they brought it within two with a, with a Jake Ansel goal there in the second period, but by then it was uh, far too little, too late. Boston dominated and shut them down. Swayman looked pretty. Was it Swayman or Olmark in that game? I forget who it was. 
It was Swayman. Yeah, that guy burns me, man. He had 28 saves and 29 shots. He was unreal. Um, and what did I say? Frederick Anderson always shits the bed early when it comes to playing the fucking Bruins, and, and he did. Those goals weren't necessarily the greatest that went in on him early. Uh, for my dog, though, Pittsburgh in regulation, plus 130 versus Washington. Julie touched on this. Uh, yeah, the Penguins absolutely beat the wheels out of, of off the caps there. I think we all kind of saw that one coming. That was a good bet. 4-1 final. Uh, for my total... This is where it gets hilarious. Pittsburgh, Washington, over 6, minus 110. Obviously, the game went under. It was 4-1. I didn't realize until halfway through this game that I actually bet the under. I meant to bet the over. So I was looking, and I was comparing like my picks for this, like for our LDTs, and I'm looking at what I bet. I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh, shit. But by the time I noticed, it was like pushing the third period. I'm like, oh, fuck. Well, I guess we're just going to ride it. Either way, whatever happens, happens. You know, I so can anyway. vouch for that because I noticed I was looking at your, your tally picks on yeah. the, uh, the, the app. I'm like, why the fuck did he bet the uh, the under here? Didn't he I didn't even mean to. <laughs> I thought it. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck happened. But anyways, so yeah, I lost my pick on the show, but ended up winning the money on the bet. Baby. <laughs> just, you, you, do, right, you just brought up sheer shit luck or something like that or to one of you two. So that's, that's what happened there. <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, we are brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, is and it's the easiest place to play fantasy sports. It's also the fastest growing fantasy app in the industry. Pick whether your favorite players will have a higher or lower stat total in the game for a chance to win big up to 100 times your money in a single night. Uh, so sign up today with promo code HGP and get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as an instant pick'em special. Visit underdogfantasy.com or find them in the App Store and register with that promo code HGP to get your first deposit doubled up to $100, as well as the Instant Pick'em Special. Must be 18 years or older and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concern with your play? Call 1-800-522-4700 or visit ncpgambling.org. Dude, I'm, I need three more Jake Allen saves. That's fucking goal here, bro. Guy always shows up. Um, all right, gentlemen. We got a three-game slate. That sounds so sad to say. A three-game <laughs> slate set here for Wednesday, April 10th. Are we ready to rock and roll or what? Oh, yeah. That's That didn't sound very convincing, but we'll take it anyways. It's baby. a three-game slate. What do you want? I don't know. Wanna... Give me something. Hoorum, hoorum. Hoorum. <laughs> All right, everybody. First game on the dock here at the 8 10 time slot here. We got the Chicago Blackhawks against the St. Louis Blues. Game itself is in St. Louis here. Chicago on the money line sitting at plus 200. Blues on the money line at minus 245. Uh, Blues on the puck line at minus one and a half sitting at plus 105. Over under sitting at six. Over paying off minus 105. The under minus 115 here. Um, Blackhawks stink. Blackhawks suck. But Peter Morazic has a funny way of keeping games close, especially as of late. I don't know what's going on with this guy. He's fucking so much fun to cheer for, though. I'll tell you that. I, like, I always like Peter, but he was awesome with Detroit back in the day when he was young coming into the league. Um, and with that being said, uh, our boy Jordan Binnington has been absolutely lights out here for St. Louis. So I'm going to lean towards the under six minus 115 in this game. I don't love it. I'm probably not going to bet like anything in this game. I don't know. If you have a good lean, maybe I'll be looking for like Bedard shots on goals or some shit like that. That was a heater of a bet to start the season, and then he got injured. So maybe that's a decent look. Um, oh, fuck yeah. Who just scored that? Tell me it was Matthews. Tell me it was. Yes, let's go, baby. Let's go. 66. Four more. 66. Let's go. That's awesome. Um, did you bet him to get two? I bet him to get 70. So I, 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 nice. I have that like 22 to one or something. So I, I need that to hit. Fucking awesome. Uh, four more. Okay, so yeah, I'm probably gonna bet Bedard shots here. Maybe the under, uh, and I might even take Chicago on the uh, on the Calgary plus one and a half, minus one twenty five. I think you know, like yeah, St. Louis has been actually really, really good at home this year, and Chicago's been terrible on the road. But at this point of the season, man, I feel like a lot of these stats just go out the fucking window. Both these teams are out of it. Nothing to play for here. Um, so yeah, you know why? Why not? Why can't we have some fun with this one? Yeah, three games late and, and two of the games suck here with minus 200 or more favors. So this game just you know c completely sucks here. I'm not back in the Blues. I'm not back in the Blackhawks on the road here. Uh, maybe a, a Brandon Saad goal I'm seeing here around two to one. Could be like a revenge spot against Chicago. He did score against Chicago back in December, and he has goals in six of his past nine games, which is pretty nice there. So maybe, you know, look, look a prop way here. I, I can't go either way for a side maybe an under just because neither of these two teams can really score too much but oh the, the blues Ooh, i got one i'm sorry i got one um on the app i use you can bet first or a goal or not in the first 10 minutes 
And normally the no is paying off plus money at like plus 110. Maybe we'll have a little boring first 10 minutes of this game here. So maybe that's something to keep an eye out for. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's called the the gift, the goal in first 10. And you give mm. it a yes or no. So it's a pretty common prop there. Um, for myself, yeah, I mean, the blue is minus 245. I don't think so. Maybe against the Sharks. But the Black Hawks have been spicy lately. They're winning some games as big dogs. They got totally outplayed against the Stars on Saturday, but Mrazek was unreal. He, uh, I think he made like almost 40 saves, something like that, um, to steal that one three to two. So, yeah, Black Hawks here, $2 plus $2. I will, uh, I'll take that. Um, plus one and a half if, if you want to be a little bit more conservative. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm going. Under six as well for the reasons that both of you guys said. Mrazek is a. Uh, you know, he, he can be very hot or cold. Right now, he, he's, mm. he's in the hot department. So uh, the under six is the way I'd look. I mean, the, the Blues kind of, you know, they, they know their season's over now. They're not making the playoffs. So I don't expect them to go balls to the wall here. And the Blackhawks, you know, not a great road team to say the least. But still, plus two, 200 here, I think that's uh, worth worth a stab. And, uh, yeah, like I said, the under six here with both offenses not being very good. And uh, both goalies playing, playing pretty well. So under six in the Blackhawks. Hell yeah. All right, moving down to the 8.30 p.m. time slot here. We have the Vegas Golden Knights against the Edmonton Oilers. Game itself is at Edmonton here. Uh, this is probably the only game realistically worth watching tomorrow night. Uh, Vegas on the money line sitting at plus 100. Oilers on the money line at minus 120. Over under sitting at 6. Over paying off minus 120. The under plus 100. Potential first round matchup of the playoffs here, man. So that'll be pretty interesting. Uh, Rye Guy, I'm going to toss this one your way. How do you see this one playing out? Yeah, this is the only game worth watching on the board. It's uh, the national TV game, at least in the States here. I think it's on Sportsnet up there, so I'm not sure about that. But, yeah, a tough thing here is the Oilers. Connor McDavid, I think, did not practice today, so he's questionable mm. for tomorrow. I thought I saw lower, yeah, lower body injury, which I think is what he had hampering him early on. But then you look at the Golden Knights injury report. They got, you know, Petrangelo questionable with an illness. Nick Nick, Nick, Nick Wah questionable, undisclosed. Carrier's out. Stevenson's questionable. So they're missing some pieces as well. Obviously, no one as big as McDavid, but Vegas 18, 16, and 6 on the road. Not very good. Edmonton 26, 8, and 3 at home. So I do lean that way. And I think that'll be bet up if McDavid does play, which I think he could. Um, and yeah, they're just playing, you know, good hockey recently. They've won. Five out of the past seven went to overtime. One of those losses. Vegas tough on their bad on the road here. To uh, lost in Arizona, blew a four one lead, and then lost in Vancouver. So I think uh, Edmonton gets it done. And then I would I would lean to the over here, over six minus one twenty. Edmonton can put up some goals. Vegas Vegas's defense has not been too great recently. So yeah, Oilers and the over for me. Yeah, this is kind of like load management season. So I won't be surprised to see McDavid miss a couple games. You know, get all. 100 percent for the playoffs because uh, it doesn't really matter who you play in the west <laughs> you're gonna be playing a damn good team there, there's no um cupcakes right now um so yeah there's not the biggest motive sure they want to win the division and all that but uh the canucks big win last night to these golden knights uh might have might have just put it out of reach but if the Oilers win in regulation the next time we play the canucks i think it's on saturday or you know if not the game after that um then they're back in it but yeah, I still can't see them, you know, going balls to the wall, playing McDavid here. I would, I would, yeah, saving for the playoffs is, is my attitude when it's this late. And you're not really playing for much. So, yeah, it's it's uh, Golden Knights or nothing for me. But uh, the, they, they're, they're uh, here's a conspiracy theory. They were up, what was it, four, four, five, one against the Coyotes on Friday. And they were absolutely yeah. miserable. Like, Seem to be intentionally miserable. <laughs> Pissed it away pretty badly, man. <laughs> yeah, to the Coyotes. Um, that was pretty uh, weird. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they have a team in mind they want to play. I don't know, but uh, maybe they want to avoid these Oilers because that would have been when the yeah that the two three would would have been uh, you know them them playing the Oilers. But then again, you don't want to play the. I guess they they want to play the Canucks, right? If if you want to go down this conspiracy road, oh, uh, the Stars, yeah. Yeah, so the, yeah. the Canucks finished second, the Golden Knights finished seventh. That that'd be the matchup. Um, yeah, I don't know, and I'm not reading too much of that. If anything, I'd lean towards the Golden Knights, just thinking that if, if McDavid doesn't play, they'll they'll get the, some of the money there. But that's that's it. But yeah, I, I do agree with Ryan in terms of the over. Absolutely, um, Golden Knights goaltending has has been very hit or miss. Luka Thompson has you know mm -hmm. a great game, then falls it up with two bad ones. Or there's. Uh, yeah, their goaltending is, is turned back into middle of the pack, really. I mean, 
Skinner had a nice stretch there in the middle of the season, but not so much lately. So, yeah, the over six here would be my only bet for this one. Yeah, I'm very worrisome about both these teams' goaltenders heading into playoffs here. I know you guys were pretty hard for Aiden Hill to start this season, and rightfully so, but he has not looked like the same goaltender coming back from injury. Uh, and you touched on it, Logan Thompson has been getting a lot of the starts here as well. And, you know, when he's fine, he's fine. I'm not going to say great or good, but but when he's bad, look the fuck out, man. There's some stinkers getting past him. Uh, injuries do hurt Vegas a lot here. I think, Ryan, you touched on that pretty in-depth, so don't really got to go into it too much. Um, in this game, though, I don't know. I just feel like I feel like the Knights, with all their flaws, with a couple bad losses, like what we saw against Arizona the other night, I still feel like that this team plays fucking big boy hockey. They have great coaching. They have experienced players, Stanley Cup caliber players. Jack Eichel has been on a tear. What do you have, three points last night or something like that? He's <laughs> He's been heating up at the right time of the year. Um, and I'm just not sold on this uh, on this Oilers team. I've made my thoughts on that very clear. Uh, and, and if you take McDavid out of the mix as well, too, and isn't Evander Kane banged up as well or something? Like, did, I just, did I read that somewhere? Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, so there's a it's a little scary and a little thin when we're coming to Edmonton here. So I'm going to take the Knights of plus money or plus 100 as road dogs. I think there's some value on that. Uh, over under, I love the over in this game though. We're seeing a lot of goals go in on Vegas, seeing Vegas score a lot of goals, and the Oilers are capable of having both things happen to them on any given night. So I think the over, especially at the number six, is a very good look in this one. I do want to touch on the the Oilers uh, goaltending situation that they've been alternating Pickard and Skinner, which I think is going to be, be good for them moving forward, especially going into the playoffs. Skinner hasn't started more than two straight games since early March. So I think he's going to be more well-rested while, uh, while Thompson and the, and the Knights, that could be their downfall. But what worries me still about the Oilers goaltenders coming into playoffs, also know what you want. What fucking playoff experience do either of these guys have? Skinner doesn't have like any, playoff experience or no skinner got lost his job to jack campbell in the playoffs last year and what the fuck has calvin pickard ever done for anybody in the playoffs it's like maybe jack campbell ends up being the guy that's what i've been saying weeks ago right at least he's won games in the postseason before so i don't know i'm a little i'm very worrisome when it comes to the Edmonton team at least goaltender wise point of view come playoffs yeah i mean you, you can't trust skinner or pickard too, too far mm -hmm. it's scary now they're capable of doing it we've seen Maybe Skinner more so than Pickard, but we've seen him play well before. So we'll have to see. They're riding with it either way. So, um, All right, let's move into the 10.30 p.m. time slot. Final game on the docket here. We have the Arizona State University Coyotes against the Vancouver Canucks, baby. Game itself is in Vancouver on this one. Arizona on the money line, sitting at plus 205. Canucks on the money line at minus 250. Uh, Vancouver on the puck line at minus 1.5, sitting at plus 105. The over-under sitting at 6.5, overpaying off plus 105. The under minus 125. Jolie. What's uh, what's the talk of the town in Vancouver out here? Well, there were a lot of fretting people, a lot of fretful people for the past uh, two or three weeks with the inability of the Canucks to beat playoff teams. But um, that that win against the Knights yesterday was massive. You could see Talker was visibly frustrated. He's not usually on at the rest, but he was yesterday. So clearly he's stressed out for a lot of the same reasons that the fan base are. Um, namely just the, the Canucks' inability to put a full 60 minutes together. But uh, they, they 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 rallied strong. They, they came back in this one. Connor Garland, the fans were cheering his name. He was getting emotional about that. He was, uh, what was it, his 400th, 400th game there. Um, so he, good for him to get two goals. Um, uh, JT Miller with three assists. Quinn Hughes, goal and assist. So, yeah, that was a good, uh, good rallying spot for the Canucks to beat the, beat the Knights there after uh, a slow start. But, yeah. The, the Coyotes here, uh, they, they beat the, the Knights, but like I said, I don't know how much the Knights are trying that third period. They they, they dominated the, the Sharks, but the, the Sharks are the Sharks. Um, did they play Seattle in between there? I don't know, but uh, I think they did. But I think they did too, no? Or was it the Kraken playing the Sharks? I don't know. If, it, if, no. if the Coyotes haven't played since uh, since the San Jose game, then I guess they're, they're more rested, but still... I like the Canucks here to win. Uh, win by margin, minus one and a half, plus one and five. Coyotes are, uh, you know, not not making the playoffs, not even close. They're a much better team at home than on the road, as we know. Uh, and, and yeah, the, the Canucks here are—they uh, got to be feeling good after after getting that that monkey off their back by beating a, a playoff team in the Golden Knights. So yeah, I, I think the Canucks roll this one. Um, yeah, and then they still need to to hang on to the division because it, it doesn't matter for this franchise after uh, a number of bad years. So. Division title would mean a lot for this city. 
Uh, so yeah, give me the Canucks here at minus one and a half. Lean to the over six and a half. Uh, Canucks do, you know, one of the best defensive teams in the league, and the power play sucks, but uh, uh, the goaltending has, has not been great to say the least, especially from DeSmith. Seelovs has come in and uh, been all right, but uh, um, DeSmith has been awful, and I expect him to play this one since Seelovs got the game against the Knights. So over six and a half, my luck. Kyrie's defense is terrible, but they, they, they could still score a couple goals here and there, and yeah. Their goaltending is also very inconsistent uh, between Vag Milk and Connor Ingram. So, yeah, over six and a half, and the Canucks minus one and a half, both plus one hundred five. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, I like sure. the over there, over six and a half, plus one hundred five. I think that's probably the, the, the best way to go here. I know that the first two meetings were both two one for Vancouver, but Arizona's been playing more open hockey recently, and I can't trust Casey to Smith, which is which is why I kind of lean to the Coyotes here at, at plus two hundred five. I know Vancouver's been playing well, Arizona on a back to back, but they they're four and four on no days rest this season. Uh, they've won four of their past six games, and I'm not not great opponents, but they're they're fight being feisty right now. So you know, plus two hundred five might be worth a sprinkle. Or at the very least, I kind of like them plus one and a half, minus 125. Canucks' last three wins have all been by one goal, including against the, the uh, Coyotes and the Ducks. So I could see a, a close game here, potentially even a, even an overtime game. So I like the Coyotes as a, as, a, as a dog for a small play, but I do like the over better. Uh, Doug Reed in the chat, Detroit shitting the bed tonight. They're they're down two nothing to the Canadians or the the Capitals. Who else is tough on the play? How about the Flyers losing eight to one to the Canadians? <laughs> That's shit in the bed. <laughs> Yo, so they, they, honestly, the Flyers just lost me my Slavkovsky and my Austin Matthews more goals in the entire oh. first line bet. So way to go, Ryan, you dick. <laughs> the, the, the Philadelphia who? What? Yeah. The, the shitters, Philadelphia shitters. That's your new team name. Um, all right, for this game here, Arizona Vancouver. Uh, I'm going to preface this. I love the over, like you guys said. Uh, Arizona has been letting in goals left, right, and center. It almost seems like Bash Milk has been absolutely horrible. And I don't know if Ingram's going to play or not in this game. We'll have to see. But even then, uh, I think over six and a half is definitely achievable here. Um, and then this is a toughie, man. Vancouver does still have something to play for here, man. Like there's a there's a chance like that the Edmonton can catch them and take that first spot in the Pacific. I don't know if it's in Edmonton's best interest to do that. You know, they'd probably get stuck playing. I don't know. No, well, if they if they take the spot from Vancouver, they'd get stuck playing. Yeah, they want to play the Kings, so they stay in the second spot, right? That, that's exactly it, right? So uh, I don't know. That's interesting, but you can't think that way, right? I know we talked about no. this a bit in the Discord, but yeah, yeah they're gonna they're gonna show up here um, without McDavid or sorry, the Canucks here. Um, Battle and they can score. They got some goaltending. It's looked a little shaky. Julie touched on something there. Casey DeSmith has not looked great at ever. That little fucking rascal, I don't even know his name that they brought in to back him up. It's been a little a little suspect here, I guess, as well. He's been fine, I suppose. I shouldn't say that. In He's the been fights, better but... than the Smith. Yeah, I know, but that, that's worrisome, right? So um, yeah, realistically, the Canucks should win this game. Minus 250 is a little bit of juice to play here. I think the over is good. Like, maybe even looks like a Vancouver team total or here. Uh, it's cookie season, man. You know, I haven't looked at uh, what players are close to for goals, but, you know, milestones are a thing and bonuses are a thing as well here. So um, take a look. Take a look at that. I don't know how Vancouver's power play has been looking lately, but uh, I can't imagine that the the everlasting penalty kill of, Car or of Arizona featuring Alex Kerfoot can do too much damage here. So I'm going to be looking uh, looking for some points and some cookies for Vancouver, and I like the over a lot. All right, three games. Consensus plays, gentlemen. Nice little quickie there. What do we what do we got? Yeah, we got the uh, over in that one. Uh, Arizona-Vancouver over 6.5, plus 105. Uh, we have Vegas-Edmonton over 6 at minus 120. And then you guys both took a uh, Blackhawks either a money line or, or plus one and a half minus one twenty five and the under six minus one fifteen and mm -hmm. I lean that way so I'll, I'll throw that one out there as well. Maybe the salami's on the plate tomorrow, you know, a nice little three game salami. You like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which way are you going? What are you talking about? Over, over, over. Okay. All right. Two well, overs, one under. All right. Fine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I could I could see either of those those two later games going having like ten or eleven goals, like a six five mm, overtime game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but what is not stupid is our new sponsor here. We have Avo. We're pr proud to partner up with Avo, the premier sports betting arbitrage tool. You guys know I love arbing. If you're new to arbitrage sports betting, it's very simple. Basically, betting both sides of a bet at two different sports books to lock in a profit. 
The AVO tool scans the sports books looking for discrepancies in the odds and then tells you how much money you need to place with each sports book and the expected profit. The tool is super easy to use and lightning fast as speed is a big part of arbitrage sports betting. The best part of AVO, AVO is it's currently free to use without restrictions in the beta. Uh, that's right, completely free. Get started today at arbsversusodds.com. That's A R B S V S O D D S.com. That's arbsversusodds.com. Okay. All right, gentlemen, we're doing something we haven't done here in a while here. I got a, I got, I woke up to a text message uh, last night, actually, not last night, but two nights ago or two days ago, rather. And it was from our good pal that we have on the show, a good friend of ours that is known only as the Segment Master, the evil Segment Master. He's been, uh, he's been the cause and the reason for some good and some bad on the show over our 300 plus episodes that we have done. Obviously, some of his segments have been known to be better than the others with that being said he was like hey i got one cooking up for you boys and you know i know you got a short game to go through on on the show here today so uh why don't you dial this one up so we're going to go through it for a new segment courtesy of our friend the segment master are you ready to hear the name of the segment gentlemen oh yeah yes sir well as it has been very well known we have found out as of late that myself and joel meyer are known as orcs and we are proud orcs it doesn't get prouder than the orc eye that we are and this segment courtesy of a friend the segment master is called heart of the orc or heart of a goblin <laughs> so what's going to happen here is i'm going to run through either a player a personnel on a team or even a scenario for a team uh, and you guys are going to have to tell me if that player that personnel or that scenario has the heart of an orc which obviously is good or the heart of a goblin, which is obviously not good. Very scared and timid and weak and feeble. Well, the orcs are strong and mighty and, and dangerous. Do we understand the Do we understand the segment? Heart of the orc or heart of the goblin? Orcs yes, good, sir. goblins bad. Orc good, goblin bad. Okay, right. running through our first thing. We're going to talk a first uh, first player. We're going to run through for heart of the orc or heart of a goblin. Here is one goaltender for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Alex Nedeljkovic. Alex Nedeljkovic has started the past nine games for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Uh, Tristan Jari got pulled 10 games ago against Dallas and hasn't played a single minute since then. Ned has played in the past nine games. Uh, even in his past 10 games, he has points in all of them. He is 7 0 and 3 in those past 10 games, 9 0 and 2 since taking over for uh for Tristan Jari here. Um, Ryan, I'm gonna throw this one your way. Alex Nadelkovich, does he have the heart of an orc or does he have the heart of a goblin? Heart of a goblin, e easy. He's, he's he's a penguin first first and foremost, and he's just been been around too much. He was with the Hurricanes. Hurricanes let him go. Red Wings, he was not great there. And Pittsburgh, yeah, he's he's having a a little bit of a good run here as Crosby makes a makes a case for the for the Hart Trophy and whatnot. But you know, the, the Dalkovich is is a, I don't think he's a guy. I think you know he can he can be a goalie for a short stretch, but I don't think he quite has the heart of an orc. Urgh, heart of an orc. I was actually just listening to Steve Valaket. Uh, I think he's the the greatest uh, mind when it comes to to hockey goalie stuff, and he was talking about Alex Dalkovich just today, and he was saying that. Nedeljkovic is a guy that thrives as like the underdog where he's coming from behind. Like he's the backup who's like trying to fight for starting role. And that's why the, the pens are, are starting him all these games in a row. Yeah. He's, he's hot and cold, whatever, but the, the guy keeps on fighting. I don't think he has the talent of a lot of other goalies in the league, but he keeps fighting that. That's all you can ask for from a good orc heart. So um, I'm Ron. Let's go with uh, Nedeljkovic as a, as a true blood orc hero. I respect that. I respect that a lot. The guy has been undeniable as of late. You know, the, the Penguins have points in their past 10 or nine games, rather, all of them with him in the net. They've been very pivotal to their success as of late and any chance they have the playoffs. Um, with that being said, I'm kind of leaning towards Ryan on here. I give Nadelkovich the heart of the goblin. Uh, he's bounced around a little bit too much for my liking around this league. He, there are some very high hopes for him. He was supposed to be the guy as a young as a rookie in Carolina there, it never happened. A uh, terrible outing with his time in uh, in Detroit as well. And although things have looked good as of late, they didn't necessarily start that good for his tenure in uh, tenure in Pittsburgh. You know, I think he got replaced by some Russian goalie or other Russian goalie at one time. Uh, but obviously, he's been great. I'm not taking away from anything that he's done for this team. There's a chance that he plays his team into the playoffs here. But I think on the overall whole, as we orcs, we love holes, us orcs. But uh, I would have to say that uh, Alex Dalkovich has the heart of a goblin here. 
Uh, okay, moving down here. This is one I'm going to throw to my friend, my fellow Orkai, Joel Meyer here. Uh, Mr. Joel Meyer, Brady Kachuk, in regards to his antics against one Nico Heischer the other night in the game again between Ottawa and New Jersey. Uh, Brady Kachuk, in regards to his antics against Nico Heischer, does he have the heart of an orc or the heart of a goblin? Remind me again, this is about the empty netter goal, right? Yes, yes, very much. That. I don't know, I didn't actually see what he did, but uh, uh, I think it's a sore loser kind of thing in, in, in general. I think that's very goblinish behavior, just uh, retaliating to a fucking empty net goal. Like, I was, I was kind of on their side against the Leafs. Now I gotta be consistent and be against the Sens when it happens to them. Like, after Ridley Greek uh, slapped the shot into the empty net, oh, who gives a fuck? Um, so yeah, I think it's the he did the they did the same thing to the to the Devils that they did to the or the Leafs did to the Sens when uh, Greek did that. So I gotta be consistent and and say who gives a shit about the, the empty net shenanigans? Who cares? Like the so what? The, the whistle blew and he, he shot an empty net. I don't care. They shouldn't care. Uh, that's goblinish behavior. I think it's just I don't think he's a goblin in general, but that was goblin behavior. Like he still has potential to be an orc. He's still an orc at heart. He's an but, orc. Uh, he's yeah. an orc. We know that. Yeah. But you're right. Yeah. He's just a very frustrated orc right now, which causes one to act like a goblin. So, mm -hmm. yeah, in the moment, a goblin, but still at heart, an orc. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's absolute goblin behavior. That, 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 that was after the final horn, right? Like, if the final horn sounded, they put the puck in the net, and, and Kachuk was like, hey, what are you doing? I get the one after. I'm like, come on. No, if you don't want them to put, him, put it in the net, keep your goalie there. And then if he takes a shot on the goalie after the whistle, then go at him, because then, you know, it's unnecessary shit, but, you know, you lost. Get off the ice. I am uh, I am vehemently disagreeing with you, too. This is mad orc behavior <laughs> here. And you know what? Very similar to the whole Morgan Rally thing. And, yes, you can say one was during the play and one was after the game and all this, and that makes a big difference. But you know what it comes down to? It comes down to a sign of disrespect. And I'll tell you right now, goblins might deal with disrespect, but orcs will have none of it, and they will stand up for themselves. And you know what? I agree with what Brady Kachuk did there. He didn't quite two-hand Nico Heischer in the face like we saw Morgan Riley do. So, you know, maybe some kudos to him from a morality side. Yeah, he just went at him and fucked with him a little bit. And, you know, he was all up in his ear and he was in his face and all that. Um, but, yeah, I think it's I think it's definite orc behavior. He's got a heart of an orc in my sign there. I want to give a bonus heart of an orc, too, here to, uh, to Ottawa Senators fans on this one. Ryan, I'm sure you saw on Twitter, everybody and their mums were coming at Sens fans for this play. Oh, hypocritical. Oh, and and to, to be fair, I, th I don't think I saw more than five Sens fans actually be like, oh, this isn't the same. This is bullshit and all this. They they kind of owned it. They understood the, you know what was going on and that it kind of doesn't look great compared to their earlier stances. But none of them really went too far out of their ways to, uh, to try and deny that what they were doing wasn't dissimilar so i'm giving a bonus heart of the york to the faithful of the ottawa senators and i hate those fucking cunts so you know you know what's coming from my my orc heart to theirs that's the nicest thing you ever said about them well I, it's true though like I, everybody was coming at these guys joel and honestly they weren't pushing back they were like yeah we get it we we can't really we can't really say much here so credit the to orc that. sees fairly and justly exactly you know the orc takes policing business into their own into their own what do they have? Hands, I guess. Paws, claws. I don't know. Something. Hands. Stump. Hands. Yeah, hands. I hands guess is correct. A humanoid. Uh, <laughs> a <little> superior. <laughs> uh, okay, we're moving down here. Uh, Ryan, this one is going to you. We're going to talk about head coach of the Philadelphia Flyers, oh. John Tortorella. Does John Tortorella have the heart of an orc or the heart of a goblin? He he has the heart of an orc. Uh, that that that's not a question. It's just it, sometimes he, he uh, orcs have to be be flexible, and you know he, he has the heart of an orc. I'm still <laughs> very much very much behind behind John Tortorella. People are talking tonight about like are, are the Flyers quitting on him? I think they they just they just run out of gas. They're just not a good enough hockey team to even beat some of these other other bad teams when they're. Down so bad, goaltending's bad, but Tortorella, uh, he, he's made me a, me, me a believer this season, so he, he definitely has the, the heart of an orc. <laughs> Ryan trying to describe the orc race is, is, is amusing. Um, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, you know, you know my feelings. I love John Tortorella as a coach, as a person, and as an orc. This is absolutely uh, 
just uh, what he's done with with this 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 bunch of uh, you know halflings and and, and and goblins out there in Philadelphia. They weren't supposed to do much, but uh, you know orcs are leaders, so he got them. As close as one could expect them to get. I mean, they're probably not going to be the playoffs now. Like, <laughs> they're like as I was saying earlier, asking talent, like, what the fuck's a goal differential in the last seven or eight games uh, against a bunch of scrub teams, too? So they're just, yeah, they're running out of gas, they're living on fumes. Tortorella's doing everything. He's trying to be positive, encouraging some nights, and other nights he's just ripping them apart. Nothing's working. They're just done. Um, but the, the future's bright for the team. And then, yeah, Jordan Torella deserves every credit in the world for for getting the, this team so far and yeah and an orc is flexible as well as creative and he's been very creative in terms of cunning uh, cunning yes yeah, so that's a better word for it um yeah very cunning in, in his tactics to to uh, get the most out of uh, a bunch of players who are you know let's face it don't have the the, the most talent in the league yeah so it's it's obvious to everyone that john tortorella has the heart of an orc with that being said there has been some very very goblinish heart behavior as of late i gotta be honest with you boys i went back and listened to that 15 minute john tortorella interview thing here and i know that we praised it a little bit but i don't necessarily know that i like everything that i heard out of there the thing when it comes to john tortorella this year a little bit it seems like when the team's doing well it's on him and when the team's playing like shit, it's always the player's fault. And I know he's walked that back and said, ooh, it's on me. I got to get the boy showing up here. He'll say that, and then he'll go up and blow a fucking gasket in the post-game you know, interviews kind of stuff. So uh, I'm a bit – I don't like everything I'm hearing from Torts. Yes, you're going to hear a lot of John Tortorella when he's coaching. I think it's starting to get to the point that it's a little bit too much, and that can be known as goblinish behavior. Do you remember when Joe Thornton came out and spoke out against him? I forget where he was. And John Tortorella said, Joe said that? Well, this guy, Michael Donald, is the best player in the league that never fucking won anything. So he should shut his mouth and stick to hockey. What is John, Tort <laughs> what is John Tortorella like done? <laughs> he's right. He's right. But what has John Tortorella done in the past 20 years? He won a Stanley Cup in 2003, 2004 as a head coach with an absolutely stacked Tampa Bay Lightning team with the likes of Martin St. Louis, Vincent LeCavier, Brad Richards, Frederick Modine, a young Dan Boyle, Pavel Kubina, the fucking Bur the Boulin Wall, Nicola Habi Boulin. Like, realistically, what has I know we had some success with Team America in that time span as well, but like, he hasn't done much of significance maybe that columbus series beating tampa when they were a juggernaut yes give him credits for that but at what point do you just shut up and coach hockey so i feel like the message is starting to wear a little bit thin there i still subscribe to the theory that there's a bit of a rift between tortorella and danny briere briere didn't hire tortorella Tor briere made him kind of name a captain when torch was publicly saying he didn't want to and then proceeded to bench that captain so i am or scratch that captain rather i don't know i think there's I think there's some goblinish heart behavior happening there between John Tortorella, but we know deep down he does have the heart of the orc, but I'm not exactly liking what I'm seeing from the Tortorella camp as of late. Yeah, it's success with the Rangers, too. He got them to at least right. two Eastern Conference semifinals. Finals. Nope. I, I guess the Lightning fair. there, too, when the Lightning were at, at their peak. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he he, uh, he had he had Lundqvist though. Like he he needs a goalie to carry him in the playoffs. He's he's a coach. The rest of that team wasn't very good though. I mean, you I can say Lundqvist. that about any coach though. You need a goalie. Show me a good goalie. Yeah. Show me a good yeah. coach. Yeah. John yeah. Cooper is not a good coach. He just had Vasilevsky. <laughs> John Cooper's a great coach. He should. I know. Be, I know. Yeah. It's crazy. He hasn't won coach of the year, but I guess his teams have been so stacked. Um, Tortorella though is is a coach for a team that's looking to take the next step, and he's not the coach for a team to win a championship. So I don't know if he will ever win a cup as, as a head coach. Again, it's a fair point. But the problem is, are a lot of these players on the roster right now in Philly? You know better than us. Are a lot of them going to be there by the time like Mishkov arrives and all this? Like, what good is he really doing right now? You know, I'm there's sure some solid, of them will. There's a solid six to eight forwards and probably three or yeah. four defensemen. So it's a, you know, a solid core. They just have to add pieces onto it. That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay, we're gonna keep this going. We got a couple other ones here. We'll run through. Uh, Joel, I'm gonna send this one to you. Who or what does this team have? The heart of the orc or a heart of a goblin? We are talking the Vancouver Canucks heading into the playoffs here. Do the Canucks have the heart of an orc or the heart of a little goblin? Ah, uh, well, that's that's the thing. We don't know yet because we haven't seen this team in the playoffs since the the bubble, and that didn't really count. Um, you know, we have we haven't seen them play in front of fans like the core of this mm -hmm. team. Even JT Miller, like he's never been the focal point on a team. Like even when he's with the Rangers and Lightning, he was always like a, a role player at the time. 
but and he's got the most experience out of anyone on the team. So right now, I mean, it, Rick Tockett, I know he has the the Harlan Orc, and he's the leader of this team. It's just a matter of if he's got this team, you know, totally bought in to play the the, the playoff style and, and to to rally because you know there's going to be some a lot of adversity in the playoffs, and just a matter of um, whether this team can overcome it. But right now, it's just hypothetical. We have to see it to um, determine the nature of the heart. But right now, I would say that I, I think that this team will have an art heart of an orc in these playoffs. I don't know if it's going to be good enough because there's a lot of orcs in the Western playoffs. So mm. uh, you got to beat a lot of orcs to, to go all the way. But I think the Canucks will at least make a good accounting of themselves. They won't go out with a whimper like losing in five games in the first round, some shit like that. If that happens, absolutely the goblins. But uh, I do think that they will make a war of it at the very least. So uh, we'll, we'll have to come back to this. But my suspicion is is orc for now. Yeah, uh, I would agree with that there. I mean, you definitely can't call them the, the heart of a god. They're, they're the top of the Pacific. They were top of the league for for quite a decent portion there. But, yeah, we're going to have to see what they have in the playoffs because looking at their roster, they don't have any, like, big physical guys. Like, you know, Talon talks about having Ryan Reeves. The Panthers are always mixing it up. But I, I, don't, I haven't watched enough Canucks games to know if any of these guys do that. But just looking at the names, besides, like, maybe Zadorov, they're all don't seem like big – you know, big checking guys type of thing. So that's what I think I want to see more out of this team. Yeah, Dakota Josh was a guy that goes to the front of the net, but other than that, you're you're pretty right. That that's what Tog is trying to do these last few weeks, like, and they're not really doing it. So that's why they're struggling. Uh, but that's definitely something that needs to be seen in the playoffs. Some just physical force to to uh, body players out of the way mm-hmm. in the front of the net. Yeah, that worries me from a defensive point of view. You know, like you look at some of these great teams like Vegas last year, you know, they had guys that were willing to battle in front of their own net defensively. And you weren't just going to stand in front of there. And if you were, you were going to pay the price. A la Petriangelo breaking fucking dry settles wrist with a slash or something crazy like that, right? Don't really see a lot of that. There's some guys there like Zadorov you touched on. Susie's not afraid to mix it up a little bit too. He's a pretty tough customer. Um, but yeah, from a from a from a strong point of view, like an angry, mean player, I got some questions about this Canucks teams. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna say they have the heart of the orc. Julie touched on a good point there. Rick Tockett is an absolute monster back there. He is an orc high. You know, this guy might even be Saruman for how, how how nasty he was as a player and a leader that he is for this team. So I'm going to give them the heart of the work. But that being said, I have a lot of questions with Vancouver here. Um, my biggest is in goal. Um, Thatcher Demko, we don't know what we're going to see from him when he comes back. We've seen a, a pattern of goalies coming back from injury this year that haven't been the same goalie that they were when they when when they were healthy right we look at Vasilevsky to start the year he got to a slow start Aiden Hill was a monster when he came back from injury he hasn't got it you guys are gonna laugh at me but Joseph Wool was playing some unbelievable hockey before his injury he came back he's been an absolute fucking bag of chips back there so you know I think I think it's safe to say that uh, with the exception of Vasilevsky Demko is better than every of those goalies so yes he has the capability to do it but we're just we just don't know what we're gonna see right so it can take a couple games to find that mojo and uh, I don't know if he's going to be back before playoffs or not. They better fucking hope so to get some reps in. So heart of the goblin. I am worried though when it comes to the back end and uh, and in between the pipes. Uh, okay, I I'll go one or two more here. We'll wrap this up pretty quickly. I'm going to go one more. Uh, Ryan, I'm going to bring this one down to you. For the Dallas Stars playoff version of Logan Stankoven. Ooh. Does Logan Stankoven in the playoffs have the heart of the orc? Or a heart of a goblin. I think he'll have the the heart of, heart of an orc. The stars have enough depth to surround him by somebody. Pro- I think he's playing with Ben right now, so he's a he's a, he's a grizzled veteran there that knows how to play playoff hockey. Uh, Stankovin's been great in the regular season. Yeah, I think Stankovin's going to be a, a a star there in Dallas for for quite a while. No doubt. You know, I love this kid. He's uh from the BC interior. Kamloops, I'm pretty sure they 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 grow them uh, hard, strong and hardy up there in the north. <laughs> <laughs> so, absolutely, man, this guy was killing it in the AHL. I think I want to say that he was like the top scorer there. And then the, the fifty-seven stars points up. in forty-seven games. Yeah, the stars brought him up. He hasn't missed a beat. Uh, a little cold lately, but uh, you know that happens with with uh, rookies. They go up and down. But yeah, we'll see what how he does in the playoffs. A smaller guy, of course, but. Uh, yeah, stars have so much, so many other options. Even if he's going cold, the other guys will pick him up. But I, I do expect him to to make an make an impact in the playoffs, no doubt. And uh, that's what Horks do. We, we make impacts. 
Yeah, I, I agree wholeheartedly here. You know, Logan Snake Oven, Julie touched on it, born and raised in Kamloops, 21 years old, much like the orcs breathing in the fiery mist of Mordor and Isengard. He has been breathing in his entire life the forest, the smoke of the forest fires of Kamloops, British Columbia. So he was raised in the smoke, much like us orcs here. Uh, I give him all the credit in the world for his success in the AHL and in 20 games in the IHL with 14 points as well so far. Uh, that's good. And, you know, don't let his height deceive you. Five foot eight, 170 one pounds guess what he's been playing hockey at that height and weight his entire life and he's been producing at all levels so uh dating back to the whl dating back to the ahl and its transition to the nhl playoffs are a little weary obviously it can be a battle it's a different game physically ryan brought a great point though as long as he's on a line with big bad fucking dirty jamie ben there i don't think he has too much to worry about he just has to use the speed and his skills in an orcish manner to be running across the ice never stopping and slashing and hacking the puck into the back of the net will our one logan stankoven be heart of the orc for stankoven here hell that's yeah a, that's an orcish name right there stankoven stankoven that is <laughs> i like that a lot you're right all right we'll wrap it there the the quiz master sent us a uh, two more but we don't gotta dive into that we're getting pretty late here what are our thoughts here for the quiz master for heart of the orc versus heart of the goblin a plus buddy Good job. Yeah. And then not, it's yeah. not the worst that he's ever done. It's not that we'll we'll be sure to pass it along to him. He's it's, it's not Celeste had... the breast or whatever that was. <laughs> hey, that one was an all timer. I still like struggle <laughs> or snuggle. Struggle or snuggle was one of my all time favorites. Oh, what was the, what was the first was... one you did? The worst was what? the uh prod or nod. Oh, no, what was the uh, door Diet. closes or water the roses? Was not water the roses or make sure that door closes? Yeah, that was, was a bit or of fart or shark. Fart or shark. Fart or shark is a good one too. The 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 segment master has had some has some extreme successful and non successful segments over there, but this was a good one. We should have passed it along to him. Uh, all right, gentlemen. Anything else you want to add before we wrap things up here? No. No. That's good. All right. Uh, everybody go check out the Sports Gaming Podcast Network website. That's the place to be. Tons of stuff in the world of sports, baby. We got hockey, uh, three games tomorrow, uh, one game worth watching. So if you're not going to watch it, you got something else to do. We'll, we'll forgive you. Uh, what else is going on? There's baseball. There's basketball. There's soccer. I hear people talking about soccer at work all the time. Uh, tons of stuff. MMA. You might work with a lot of Europeans, right? I, I do. There are very – we got Caribbean. a couple – We got. A, there's a big Brazilian crowd at our work, and oh, they're yeah, heavily invested. That. And some Eastern Europeans as well. So they all love that shit. Um, yeah, so tons of stuff at the World of Sports. You can find all that information there. Be sure to check out, like we said uh, earlier, the uh, the Golf Gambling podcast, podcast with the Masters team off in two days. Be sure to enter the contest where they are giving away their uh, tailor-made spider putter. Those things are absolutely wicked. They're expensive too, man. Those things are like fucking like 500 bucks or something like that. So, um, yeah, it's absolutely wicked. Be sure to sign up for that as well. Um, and, of course, Ben, shout out to all of our friends and pals in the Discord the discord is a place the discord is is happening you know there's stuff going on in there so uh, if you want to get in the discord you can reach out to myself or ryan on twitter we should have pointed in the right direction uh or you can reach out to the http twitter account social media assistant producer will tell you everything you need to know uh or what you can do is just start cutting down trees in the fields of isengard because we need to dig more pits to build more orcs orcs are forged in the mud we the mud is our father and the dirt is our mother and we will be there and once you're there cutting down trees to forge more orcs you'll find our very own joel meyer doing the exact same and uh you can ask him hey how do i get into the discord a rum one a rum one a rum one Go over burn off. baby burn Trees are made for burning. You hear that, Ryan? <laughs> Suck it, Gilbert. <laughs> you tree ass. All right. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast. Uh, follow on Twitter. Yeah, all, all that good stuff there. All right. All right, everybody. My name is... You can find me at Twitter at... Underscore... 94... I'm Ryan Gilbert. You can follow me on Twitter at rgilbertsop. My name is Jobbers. <laughs> and you can find me eating man flesh. Eating man flesh and drinking man blood. Arr, 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 arr. Arr, you can arr. find you in the scrolls in the <laughs> I can't easy in the scrolls of Gorboroth. <laughs> 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 All right, everybody. Arr, 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 arr.